everyone, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're starting to talk about folks and today we're going to talk about Folk of the Air, the series that starts with The Cruel Prince by Holy Black. I know we're a Star Wars podcast, but you know, if you're upset, you know, the best way to get over the rise of Skywalker is by reading <laughs> other stuff. And so my name is Denise and I'm here with Mary. Hi, guys. So we're going to start with a non-spoilery review. So if you haven't read it, you can follow along. Then we're going to go into analysis, but we'll let you know. Okay, so we're talking about the folk of the air. We're going to explain a little bit what it is for those of you who haven't read it. It starts with a book called The Cruel Prince, and then it has three books, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. So Mary, can you tell us a little bit what the series is about? Yeah, I mean, the series then focuses on uh, Jude. Most of all, it's told from her point of view. And it's really about um, her, you know, basically what happens at the beginning of the book. I don't think we'll be giving spoilers away by saying this, but her um, parents get killed by uh, Madoc and uh, he adopts her and her um, twin sister, yeah, um, so Taryn. And her, her, her eldest sister, Vivian, is Maddox with uh, the mother. And so takes just, them... just to explain, Maddox is Fae. So he comes from this Fae kingdom. And Jude is human, right? So keep on going. <laughs> keep on going, sorry. Uh, Viv- Vivian is half human, half Fae, as you can guess. So basically, it's about um, Jude trying to fit in to in, in the uh, Fae world and... You know, the more she tries to fit in, the more she becomes accustomed to their way of life. Like she gets involved in uh, their court politics. Again, Game of Thrones for uh, teenagers, and she has a very interesting love-hate relationship with one of the princes, Prince Carden, shall we say? Mm-hmm. Dun dun dun. Yeah. So the thing is that this he's he's a brut- this man comes and brutally murders her parents, but it turns out that he's actually a pretty good stepfather. He's like he's a father figure for Jude, and he plays with them and he teaches her a lot. She wants to be a knight, and she is very good fighter because she learns so much from her stepfather, Madoc, who is this big general. And also because he's this big general, he sends his kids to the school with the nobility. So they're human and they're going to the school with the noble fae. And in this fae world, uh, humans are only slaves. So imagine how, imagine like, so it, a lot of it comes, the conflict from being this place where don't, they don't belong. They're weaker, the fae are like, uh, they're, the fae are stronger, more beautiful, immortal. So it's quite interesting how what she does like to compensate and to fit in right and then she goes and tries to do politics and stuff and so and this cardon he's one of the princes he's one of the the children uh, of the king and he goes to school with her so there are some things about uh, in school and then more stuff like that so that that's more stuff much. like that yeah well she kind of like gets all, you know she also gets him involved in uh, the politics where um he never has been before so that is that's really interesting we, we'll talk about that more later but their relationship kind of like evolves while dealing with the politics of the court which uh can be quite dangerous <laughs> Yeah, it's quite dangerous. I, we, I, I think I, some, one thing that I liked about it is that I always, we, you always have the sense that she's in danger. She's always in danger in that world. And that's quite exciting. It makes the, the books exciting. I also like the fact that, um, you know, you, there's, there's, you know, she's quite selfish in a way because she does want power. You know, at first it kind of like, you know, seems that she wants to fit in, but the more she gets embroiled in it, the more she wants... Um, you know, the power in the court. So it's kind of like absolute power corrupts absolutely, as the saying goes. It's true. Well, she is, and that's the thing, she is like her stepfather, and that's something that's amazing. And she takes after him a lot. So, and remember, he's a brutal murderer. And he's a red cap, so he, he dips his cap in blood. So that's the this monster father that she's... Um, going up against and then there's her relationship with her sisters there's a stepbrother and it's quite interesting this weird family and is trying to fit in in this fey world and in the family too because the stepmother Ariana doesn't really like her that much 
But mm-hmm. um, her, her brother, Oak, adores her. And uh, she adores him. And uh, But there's just like, you know, the stepmother isn't... Um, you know, too happy about that, which is interesting. Yeah, but remember that he's not her brother by blood. That's something interesting that, you know, the the family ties in this novel are not necessarily blood ties, but he's pretty much her brother. She considers him her brother. So yeah, if you haven't read them, please go and check them out because they are really fun. Mary, what did you think about the book or the books, the series? I loved it. I mean, um, I'm not really a big reader I never really have been um I've you know like I'm more into like the film kind of side and uh film analysis and and media production because I graduated you know with a film and media studies degree and I've been more into television series as well and I've just never really given books you know much of my time if I'm being honest apart from like you know the Harry Potter series and a couple of others but after Rise of Skywalker and that whole mess I just, th- I just thought, right, I, re- I really, really want, you know, um, a good, well-written series with a f- female protagonist who struggles and goes through things, and also, like, a really good enemies-to-lovers uh, romance as well. And I looked around, and uh, a few of my real fran- f- um friends had um, recommended this, and I'd seen on social media that a lot of Raylos were uh, enjoying this series, so I gave it, I gave it a go. And oh my god, I could not, I could not put, you know, the first, the first book down. I had to get the second one, and then after that, I had to get the first one. So I read them in like a matter of days. I think less oh, than wow. a, I think less than a week, which is a, for for me, that's uh, I consider that a big achievement. That's awesome. I had read it a long time ago. I remember, I think it was in some discussion on Facebook about a book that starts that doesn't take that has a quick start and they mentioned this i kind of disagree a little it has a strong beginning but then it, but I, I i it's it's very good and i really enjoyed it and i, I read the whole series and i was telling you mary to read that one right yeah Remember? yeah you i know other people were and they said oh you're gonna like it you're gonna like it and it has a nice female protagonist and everything and i really like ya literature i, I think I think the reason I like it, it has a very good balance with adventure, romance, and personal development, right? Because some people like, sometimes I read a fantasy romance, and I'm like, where's the plot? <laughs> That's it? That's it? Where's the plot? I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, criticizing romance, because you have to really work with those feelings and stuff. But I'm like, I want, I want some more plot. And if I read like fantasy, like dude bro fantasy, I'm like, where are the feelings? Where's the romance? <laughs> And usually YA, you know that you're going to have a little bit of everything. And plus you have the idea of coming of age. And this is a lovely coming of age um, series. What I like about it is how it's about family. And it has some good values about family and how you relate to your family and found family and um, family based on upbringing and love. Yeah, just a note to uh, JJ Abrams and Chris Terrio. Uh, legacy does not define you like apparently raving a palpatine does uh so and yeah take notes from this series gentlemen it'll teach you a lot of things (laughs) they're not gonna read it and oh one thing i find is that it's important for us to to try to look at stories written by women or maybe produced by women you know it's uh, because you know lots of men so so it's one reason to go and read books because women are writing lots of books and read books and that, <laughs> so I, I think the the romance in it was interesting and the, the criticism the only criticism that i find and i agree are from people who like uh, older men or who read romance or who read steamy romance they are going to be disappointed in this i know some people who come from romance and they say so oh, there's this enemy to lovers and they're expecting this hot stuff and you know they're teenagers it's coming of age it's kind of sweet there's an interesting dynamic but it's it's not a big alpha male you know <laughs> which is fine I don't I, I don't mind it but you know I'm just saying that what I find that people get disappointed with it are are the people who are expecting that which I don't think it isn't I even find that some parts a little bit childish but overall I like it I think there is something sweet about it even though it can be a little bit dark sometimes it has a cool plot and political things Oh yeah, I agree. I uh, when I uh, 
finished reading it, I, the first thought that popped into my into my head was it's kind of Game of Thrones for teenagers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The- without the horrible stuff, yeah, because there is a cool plot, and I think that's it. It feels very satisfying, especially in the first book. It really nails it. Yeah, the first book is, I think, is my favorite. I, I don't know. I I love the first two books equally, but I just wanted to say, you know, like what what you were saying about women writing. That's totally where. Um, that is part of the reason why I've decided to like look into more books now and more fantasy romance books because that's mostly women writers and I feel like um, you know after Rise of Skywalker and a a few other things a few other film and uh, media things which I've been disappointed in the way not only just the way the romance has gone but in the way the um, heroine has been written and I can't look any further than that than Rey personally because wow what um what a big big disappointment so um it's just nice to read stories where you know it's written by women who understand other women and watch these heroines you know go go through go through journeys you know to discover who they are not just um about themselves but also about their uh, potential you know love interests as well because as we said it is an enemy to lovers romance i like i liked it i mean i found it uh, you know, it's it. I suppose it's not like the big bang, massive um, center of attention. The center of the uh, the center of the books is more like um, you know the political intrigue and Jude coming to who is the protagonist coming to understand that. But I still found the romance was um, a big thing of the plot, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed it. And I found it quite hot as well. So um, <laughs> I don't yeah. think I don't think it was like. You know, some some romances when it's a mixture of genre, it's in the background. I personally mm-hmm. don't think it was, and uh, Carden is also a great character as well. So um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it is hot. It is exciting, and he is a great character. I just find that some people, if they come from they're used to reading an adult romance, they feel disappointed because it is YA. It's hot, it's interesting, but it is uh, about teenagers and I guess for teenagers. For right? teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess now we're going to go to the spoilery part. So if you haven't read it, I suggest you go and read it. It's fun and it's, in, it, it, it's very fast paced. It's a fun read. And we're going to talk about the characters now. So if you have read it and you want to keep on the discussions, stick around. So Mary, so I guess you really liked Jude, right? Oh, hell yeah. I, I love Jude. Jude, I found Jude like really, really refreshing because, oh my God, we have a heroine who likes dresses. Can you believe that in the world of your of YA, there's a character who enjoys dresses, and it's not just a stereotypical, oh, I'm not like other girls kind of thing. I find that trope <laughs> so annoying and so outdated, and I also like really, really hate it in re- in regards to film as well because, um, for example, with with um Ray, in you know, th- there's never a chance where she can embrace her you know femininity. You know, especially in Rise of Skywalker, where she's just, you know, like in these pure virginal, uh, you know, this pure virginal white gown, and her hair is back in the three buns, you know, in the childlike symbol hair, and she's um, she turns into Superwoman. So it's basically just, you know, a man's way of writing the strong, independent heroine, which I hate, 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 hate. It's so old, and it's even more annoying when women write it as well, because again, it's so old. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like I said. Um, it's really nice to um, finally f- find a heroine who likes dresses and feminine. There's even like scenes where she and her sisters, you know, like excited, uh, you know, they have dresses made for them. Oh my god, I love it. But anyway, <laughs> back to Jude. She is quite arrogant in some ways. And I also like the fact that she, um, you know, things don't go, all, you know, how she wants them to go. There's uh, twists and turns for her, like, for example, when she makes that deal with uh, Prince Dane, I think. And uh, she, um, yeah, that's, I don't think that was a good move, but it worked in her favour, thankfully, due to luck. 
she had to do it, right? I don't think she had much of a choice. So you, that, that's the thing about her. She's in this situation where she's the weakest and she's trying to be strong. And But one thing I'm going to say, this thing that you're talking about, heroines that like dresses, I remember before they were all like tomboyish and not like the other girls. But I found that in, lately in the recent uh, YA books that I've been reading, uh, they're all fine with it. Uh, I guess that's why, because it's mostly women writing it, right? So it's something that... it's something Something that's cool, you know. They're not like, ooh, I hate dresses. Yeah. Girly, girly, girly stuff is bad, you know. Which is very, I mean, which is fine. There are girls who hate dresses. I, I know girls who hate dresses, and they can be very feminine. You know, I, I know people who who hate uh, fluffy, flurry stuff. Like me, I hate pink. I'll never wear pink. Oh, <laughs> I love pink, and that's a I bit. Hate, that- I hate, I hate, I hate pink. But, <laughs> But I don't know. But you know, it's fine. But I'm just saying that it's 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 annoying when you have only one type of women, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. Anyways, but what I like about Jude is the idea that she has this monstrous father. He is a monster <laughs> and a killer, and yet he is her father, and it's who she identifies it with, and who she takes after and she learned with him and then she has this kind of monstrous nature let's say that that is aggressive that is sometimes too aggressive right at the f- i think it's the end of the first book she's she thinks she has that memory and it's about hate hate and keep hating you know and but on the, at, at the same time it's not seen as something completely bad it's not like oh it's bad it's something that's good it makes her strong it makes her a strategist it's something that's good but just sometimes she takes it a little bit too far uh, yeah. even in relation with Cardon, I, I feel that sometimes she's worse she's worse than him you oh know? she's definitely worse than him yeah she <laughs> yeah. is <laughs> It's I, funny because I saw some criticism, some people saying he was abusive to her. I was like, hello. No, no, no way. <laughs> they were, no. You know, they didn't have the best start to relation, to the relationship, but um, even Jude underestimates him. You know, yes. like, um, he seems like he comes across as this re- really drunken playboy, uh, but at the end of the second book, wow, what a difference. He fooled everyone, and I, I loved it. You know, like because yes. he he just he ends up being an effective leader, and he he tricks the um the queen of the seas and his her his, her daughter as well, who also um ended up being a friend and a lover of his, I think, as well before yes. he um got with Jude, and it's just like haha that that is great. But I also like you know their relationship because it's through not just like their, it's through their shared loneliness of like navigating the court, you know, the court. And the, you know, learning about each other's backstories that makes them like sympathize with each other and like generally start to fall in love, I think. And it's quite sweet. It is. I, I, I find that the, the, the end of the, the second book is wonderful in the idea that she's kind of like keeping him on a tight leash, you know, I can say. And, you know, she needs to give him space, you know, to be himself. And I find it it's something that resonates with women. I don't know if it was on purpose, but sometimes they do everything, everything, and they feel so overwhelmed and tired. And sometimes it can, should, you know, let some things go and trust. And she needs to trust him. And you're right that she doesn't respect Cardon for all the fear that she has. She had to learn to let him be himself and respect and trust him, which is something that she does at the end of the second book, and I guess a little bit on the third book. Oh yeah, in the which... third book, she com- she completely respects him and loves him because she's desperate to uh, save him from uh, the curse. So yes. um, it's quite it's it's an amazing character development, I guess. <laughs> what also kind it of is. like. What 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 also kind of I like about the relationship is the kind of um, like juxtap- juxtaposition between them. Like even though um, I mean Maddox is not her father. He's more he's more a stepfather because he killed her real parents. But at the, yes. at the same time, you know she she is raised. I mean the difference in their siblings is amazing. Like she's very close with her twin sister Taryn and even her half sister Vivian. Uh, whereas Carden. You know, he has monsters for siblings, you know, he has Dane and then um, what's his name? Ballot you know, Dane doesn't it doesn't in you know, Dane is not interested in him at all and uh Bal- Balakin abuses him. I mean, oh my goodness. 
so but he takes him in right he's the only one who takes him in it's kind of weird how things are bad and at the same time good right um mm, yeah i i, I i'm not, not saying like he's it. good i'm <laughs> just saying it's a little uh, dane is not great either but it's yeah for Cardon he's in a horrible situation and he had a mother who didn't love him and yeah but yeah w with Jude I find um, Madoc is like her he counts as her father really which is very interesting <laughs> yeah she, um, she's just like him she like you said <laughs> just like him and he's a monster but at the same time he's really nice to her you know he's a loving <laughs> it's very weird and, and but, but i actually like these th th these things and how it makes for a rich story and how it uh, makes the characters good and we're talking about Cardon, so let's talk about him oh so what are your opinions i liked him um i kind of wish I kind of wish I, I kind of maybe thought that the the story focused a little bit too much on Jude. I kind of would have liked to have seen Cardan in the picture a bit more, especially when, when um, you know he exiled her um, at the you know at the start of the third book. Well, it was at the end of the second book, but in the beginning of the third book, which is just completely Jude alone in the human world, and apparently you know like he sent he sent letters to her begging her to come mm -hmm. back even though she didn't see them i would have liked to have seen more of Cardin's point of view in the third book i think you know about his love for jude and him writing these letters and um you know just uh just uh ruling the kingdom i guess without her i would have liked to have seen it a bit more yeah, I think that's when a, a dual point of view could have been interesting. But at the same time, I find that they kept it to Jude's point of view. Because for the third book, I guess she wanted to be a surprise that he loved her. Which was not a surprise, it was freaking obvious. I mean, even from the end of the second book, you know, like, well, duh, he said the crown, hello. <laughs> but um, I think, I, and also it is a fir always first person, she wasn't going to change it then. But I think there was the idea of starting this third book um, not sure about him and thinking she had been abandoned but I never bought it I didn't think it, it was something that really happened so it wasn't mysterious for me um, for Cardon one thing that I don't like that I find childish when in the first book when she goes to his room and find his page written Jude, 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 Jude. <laughs> like hello how old is he 11 I mean and then she reads it like oh my god he must really hate me <laughs> it's like hello and I don't know I found it a little funny uh, it's just quirky and funny yeah <laughs> like I, I like the scene at the end of the first book when when she has him like imprisoned in that in the underground lair and she's just convinced that you know um he hate he, he hates her and, and yet he's right there and he's saying in front of her face I, I wanted you and yet I hate myself for it it was just hilarious yeah it's funny but but at the same time it, it can feel a little naive but at the same time it, it makes sense in the sense that she feels that this world of fate it's something that she doesn't belong to and she, she, she desperately wants to belong you know in a way she has a certain feeling of inferiority right so I can kind of see that how she wouldn't believe that he would like her right even which is the, the issue with the end of the second book and the beginning of the third book that she doesn't really think that. I kind of found it a little bit uh, weird, I guess, is um, at the at the end of the first book when she was kiss kissing him, when she had him tied up, because you know he he wasn't exactly nice to her. In fact, not, not being nice is a bit of an understatement. And uh, but at this at the same time, he did try and defend her from um, what's his name, Valadrian whenever he could. But Valerian. 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 Oh my god, that character's name drives me crazy. Guys, guys, if there is anybody from the fandom there, we're not. We've never been in the fandom of the of Folk of the Air or anything, okay? <laughs> forgive us. Please forgive us. But yeah, the names are hard to pronounce. But yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I was just like, you know, she kept, she kept saying how much she hated him and hated him. So I found it a little bit weird that she um, snogged him right then. I think it would have been a bit more um, natural if um, she um, if she 
kissed him at, you know when she when she like was beginning to like sympathize with him and she found out that he wasn't all he was made out to be in the middle of the second book mm. yeah because this I, I, I th- I like the first kiss. Was a hate because she's, she's always been into him, you know. She's always, always, always because he's just like beautiful. I mean, it's not even handsome, beautiful. And <laughs> I think she really wanted him. And, and at the same time, she kind of realized that he wasn't the monster that she thought he was at that point. And um, she, I, I, I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, that first kiss. Well, th- now that they're talking about it, the one thing that I didn't like was in the third book when they actually um, had their first time. Um, that it was so weird <laughs> <laughs> that she went away. And I think it, it. I think she really has something, an issue with being emotionally vulnerable, right? Which is something that I think nobody likes. It, it's hard for everybody, but for her, of course, it's going to be even harder. Because she's a human her, in a fairy up, world. <laughs> up bringing, right? Uh, but I think that would have been the moment to surrender and be a little bit more vulnerable, right? And instead, she's still making that. F- you know, like it, it's a missed opportunity in the text, but I guess <laughs> I guess she still have, has something to learn. You know. Speaking of mixed of uh, missed opportunities, I have to bring the character up of um, oh my goodness, how am I going to pronounce his name? What is it, Locke? Loki? I think it's Locke. Or yeah, Locke. Locke. It's not Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Loki. <laughs> Locke. Again, if there is somebody from the fandom, okay, forgive us if we're... so. It's Locke, right? Oh. I love to hate him. He is such... Uh, I'll refrain from using bad words, but oh, he, he's horrible. I mean, um, he's kind of like the anti-Cardan, um, I guess. Whereas, um, you know, Cardan respects Jude for, um, you know, who she is and her pol- political shrewdness. He's just... He he does not do the same for, for Jude or for her twin sister, Taran, who he also gets involved with. Um, he's just like... He just uses them both as his, um, you know, as means for entertainment, you know, because he finds it amusing that the uh, two, he pits the two sisters against each other for his affections, and um, yeah, and then after and then afterwards, he's just so emotionally manipulative towards Taron, and yet he keeps yeah. trying to humiliate Jude. Oh my God! But the reason why it's such a missed opportunity is they had um, Holly Black had everything. For, set up for him to be the the main villain of the uh, third book and she didn't take it and I really really find that to be like the biggest mi- mi- missed opportunity of uh, the series because how awesome would it would it have been if um, because he, he he knew that Jude um, killed what's his name Please. Valerian <laughs> Valerian yeah he, he knew she killed him and I think I can't remember correctly but I think he also knew where, where um, she buried him. How amazing would it have been, it been in the third book if he um, unearthed that body and uh, exposed to everyone that she had murdered him? Ooh, <laughs> you need to write a <laughs> an alternate scenario of fiction, fan fiction. Fan there fiction. must be maybe some something. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, there is one passage in the, I think it's a se- the second book when she's talking to the um, blacksmith girl i forgot his name we, we, we just remembered because uh, and it's just she said he says oh he's marrying by love for love terry it's just like oh it must be love because we don't have money and i'm like hello she's maddox's daughter you know and i find that maybe he would be somebody um trying to get power and you know that he resents it because cardon even though he was abused and everything. He had some power, right? At school, he, he has power over the, the teachers, over his uh, classmates. He has power, whereas Locke doesn't. And you see that he kind of resents it and he would like to have more power. So from being with Taryn and everything, it could have been cool. I, I agree. But yeah, it's an interesting character. But in the first book, with all that manipulation and the very horrible idea I think it's horrible the idea of um, sharing a guy with your sister do you have siblings Mary? I do not I'm an only child okay good you good for you because I have a sister and I, I just find you know that if I ever I would I would never 
you know, like the idea of uh, oh, uh, you know, like some s kissing the same person or whatever. But I, I, I remember when it comes out, you know, in that book, it almost made made me physically ill. And but at the same time, I think it's interesting to work on these disappointments and stuff. So it was something that was interesting. And uh, yeah, he could have been some mastermind, but he wasn't. <laughs> Oh, I, th I think he kind of was, but he just did it for his own amusements, and it yes. ne it never really progressed that far because you know, like he even tells Jude that you know, oh, um, I like drama, and you know, what better drama is there for him than uh, the two sisters vying for his attention? But um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I really, really would have loved it if um, he had been the main villain. Maybe even like um, found some way to manipulate Madoc. Um, and like make him become you know become uh, the big figurehead, or may or maybe you know like he somehow fi figured out um, that uh, Oak was uh, the child of Dane, and uh, schemed with Madoc to put him on the throne so he could he could be like you know he could use Oak as a puppet, and that would kind of like juxt uh, you know have juxtaposed him with Jude even more because Jude also wanted to do that, but she wanted to do that for the good of the kingdom, and for uh, and. Locke, of course, wouldn't. He would want to do it for his own power, so it is um, a big shame that it didn't go that way. I think because, especially as Madoc is a villain on his own, yeah, it's interesting. But you know, he's st he still he still loves Jude, and he still loves his family. And I didn't really find, um, you know, that you know him versus um, Jude all that. No, interesting is not the right word, but I di I didn't find it. I didn't find that it had too much of a stake, if you know yeah. what I mean. Whereas if you had Locke as the villain, oh my god, the stakes would have been so high. Yeah, I agree with you. So um, yeah, so it was a missed opportunity, <laughs> but not missed because it's it is a really cool book, and in a way, it is interesting to see Jude confronting her father, right? But at the same time, I agree, Locke is an interesting character. And what about Taring? <laughs> Again, mi missed opportunity because um, they actually, uh, you know, Madoc actually had her, um, I, I like, you know, like in contrast to Jude, Jude is like the more um, kind of like, you know, she'll fight anybody. She's more of the tomboy, right? Whereas um, mm -hmm. Taryn is more quiet. She's, um, you know, she's more uh, manip manipulative in the fact that she is quiet and no one would ever suspect her. And I think there is um, a part in the second book where she actually dis disguises herself as um, Jude and goes and steals some do some some documents from her. I think I knew I knew the minute in the second book where um, she says to um, Jude, "Oh, um, the guards gave me a copy of uh, your key to your room because I just uh, because I just persuaded them because they, uh, um, I look I look like you." I knew the minute she um, <laughs> said that she was gonna betray Jude, like. But then. But then in the third book, it kind of like goes back on it. Kind of goes back on itself, and Taryn says to her Jude, "Oh, I was um, Madoc told me to do it. I never knew what I was stealing." And I'm like, "What? This isn't the same kind of like quietly scheming Taryn in the second book." Uh, um, it, it it wasn't just stealing. It was the end of the the second book when she pretends to be Jude and she agree. She makes Cardan promise to give half his army to. to that's Madoc it. And I knew I was. I knew it I was, was really something. big. It wasn't something that she couldn't know what she was doing, right? Yeah, but uh, no. But at the same time, I kind of like th thought that, you know, um, oh, Maya could just told her to do it. It it it. For me, it just seems like a missed opportunity that, you know, she knew what she was doing and just in enjoyed it. Whereas, you know, it kind and of... I, and I think, I think she takes after Madoc a little bit as well. Not in the um, sword fight, but in the planning and, you know, and I think, it, again, it could have been a little bit uh, further developed. I find that her... I'm glad that they got along well and that she had to... Yeah. But I wish she had her earned her redemption and, you know, we had... Done, we have felt it. I didn't feel it, you know, that I didn't feel Jude really having to struggle 
struggle to forgive her or Terry struggle to you know realize w- w- what she what, done wrong what she done and also there is a companion novella to this series called The Lost Sisters which I guess you haven't read right Mary not, not yet I'm trying Don't to re- well, I, read it. I am trying to trust me I am trying to read um, the modern fairy tales Uh, oh it's, no! Uh, uh, isn't it in that? It's really, really hard no, to read. It's not there. I couldn't read that one. If somebody likes it, I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> this is just a novella. And it's very short, and it's the point of view, Terence's point of view during the Cruel Prince. But uh, basically, <laughs> instead of making you understand her, because see, it's not that hard to understand, right? See, she's in the Fey world. She's a human. She wants to survive. She wants to be part of that world. And there is this handsome fey guy who promises that he loves her you know it's not that hard to understand how she could have man- be manipulated to do something that even to her own sister but the book i don't know the book just makes her seem even worse she just seems awful <laughs> and <laughs> selfish and stupid i i don't think it, i don't think there was an an effort into really stepping into her shoes and understanding what it feels like to be in that situation you know no, um, I don't. Th- I don't think that was. But I did like the fact that that um, in the second, in the uh, third book, she and Taryn do work together, and they mm-hmm. do forgive each other, and you do feel you do feel their sisterly bond. It wasn't just another oh, a, um, a sister betrays a, another sister, and then that's the end of it. You know that she, she's never forgiven. You know it's still there. I just wish. You know, I just wish it had been expanded on a little bit more. Especially, it would have been really cool. If um, Tar- Tarin had been like conflicted between her, you know, co- uh, her um, loyalties to her husband and to her sister in the third book, if Locke had been the main villain, and then you know, re- had really discovered what a what a, a not very nice person he is, and then totally gone on to uh, Jude's Jude's side, and you know, fully earned her redemption that way, but we didn't get that sadly. We didn't get that, and Taryn is just if <laughs> if you think she's bad, you know, <laughs> if you read the Lost Sisters, she's like she's worse. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but 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 you know, like I try to forget the Lost Sisters, but I can kind of see how she is also in a very difficult situation, and she also has struggles, just like Jude, in trying to belong in this world where she's like she's weaker she's you know she's not immortal there's so so many things and it, it's fascinating the way that the the twins take after Madoc because they were raised there while V Vivian totally wants to be human yeah because she she spent more time in the human world you know and she wants to be human and it's a fascinating take but it's something that gives them trouble because they want to belong in this world Uh, that's why I find that uh, tearing you know it's something that could have been a little bit more understood you know maybe she should have felt bad about the way she about the things she did for her sister but I guess she just didn't <laughs> which is funny but I they got she, along at the end which I is think good she, I think she did in, in the third book but I think it's what after when, um, when she realized that um, you know ev- everything was you know everything had kind of like fallen apart you know she murdered her husband and she was pregnant and she was being put on trial so I think that's what mm-hmm. kind of like woke her up and yes. ma- made her realize how just how hard it, uh, everything had been on Jude, yes. especially like with, the, with ruling the kingdom and whatnot. Yeah, but yeah, she, it's it's an interesting character, and it's interesting to explore how the way the two sisters go about things and try to belong and everything. One thing that I don't I like is Oriana, the stepmother, and how in the beginning. It feels as if she thinks they're idiots or something, <laughs> but in in fact she's overprotective of them, and she's a little overprotective of Oak as well. So there is some kind of motherly love there, um, overprotective, but still. So that was something that I thought was cool. Yeah, I I, I liked her, especially in the in the third book where um, she and Jude kind of like um, interact a bit more, and she uh, really realizes that. Um, you know, Oriana. Oriana just doesn't think they're stupid, stupid humans. She was trying to protect them all in her own way, especially mm-hmm. Oak. And she generally misses Oak as well. I felt so bad for her when yeah. um, you know Oak got taken away from her because she generally loved him as a, as um, uh, as her as if he was her own. 
I did fi- I did find it somewhat interesting that um, Holly Black decided against using a- Ariana um, as Oak's real mum. Instead, it's her it's her friend who is also you know the consort of the high of um, Carden's father, who bear who um, bears him, and uh, I'm, I'm, I think it would have been like interesting if it was Ariana, but. Yeah, I, I, I don't see. I don't see how Ari- Ariana could have survived. So uh, no, yeah, she wouldn't have survived. And also, I think it keeps with this theme of family that's not a family, right? So Oak is Jude's brother, even though you know he's not her brother. Madoc is her father. Ariana is her mother in a way. And it, 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 but it, but it, I like it. I think it's quite interesting. It, it works. Again, take note, JJ and Chris Terrio. <laughs> They're not going to read the YA, YA novels. But that, that's why, you know, these things are, <laughs> are important, you know, th- these things to be talked about. And what about Nicasia? Nicasia, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Honestly, she didn't really make a big impression on me. Like, I, I've kind of, I'm going to be honest, I've kind of forgotten about her a little bit. <laughs> but um, I guess... You know she's she's finding a place to belong to. Like she doesn't really belong in her own world, but she also doesn't really belong in the Fae world. But I'm re- yeah, I'm the, I'm really the, really it, yeah I'm really really glad that it didn't turn into a big massive love triangle between her Cardin and Jude. You know it kind of felt even though she still generally did love Cardin, it felt like a relationship that had happened in the past, and Cardin had like you know gotten with Jude at that point. So thank God it wasn't a love triangle because I'm I'm sick of that. Oh come on, love triangles are exciting, you know. They're you know, anyways. Sometimes it can be tiring when when um, they're well written. When they're well written, they can be good because it provides a source of conflict, right? What I don't like is when the uh, heroine everybody's. Uh, things, you know, when the protagonist, everybody loves her. <laughs> it's oh, really yeah. ridiculous. Which is not the case in this book, which I like very much. I think it's very clear why Cardon likes Jude, right? Which is about, uh, she defies him and she challenges him and there are good reasons for... Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. To she, like to- she totally um, kick, you know, kicked his ass at um, that, sword, that sword fighting part. You know, was it a little tournament? It was kind yeah. of like a little, yeah, it was great. <laughs> so I, it, it was good. And, and, and not everybody is falling in love for Jude, <laughs> which, please, thank you. Although it's fine, you know, I find that, you know, like kind of like these wish fulfillment novels were, are, are, are totally fine too, yeah. But it's just, I, I find it more interesting like this when you kind of see why the people like each other, you know, can, can kind of understand. And mm-hmm. what I was gonna say about Nikasa, I, I think that uh, she got away too quick, too easily too. Because in the second book, she and her mother are like big villains. They imprison um, Jude, and then on the third book, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. There is um, speaking of that, there is a couple of things where I felt like um, it went, it kind of went nowhere in the books. That there's that one, and then of course. Um, there was um you know Locke being set up to ma- to be the main villain but then there was also um Sophie you know that girl in the f- in the uh, first book um where um Jude is sneaking around in i think Balakin's apartment but and she, she dies right she she does die well no actually no, I don't think it's ever like confirmed but, but um, then she shows up maybe yeah she doesn't show up though doesn't she? Doesn't Jude see her like among the mer the mer folk? Is it mer folk? The water people? No, there? I I don't I don't remember that at all. If 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 I'm wrong, please contradict me. But I honestly thought that she would see her among the mer folk, and maybe like she would try and help her escape or something. But mm. I I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. It just kind of like went nowhere. You know. You know. It didn't. It didn't. Mm, I sh- see. Yeah, her body didn't wash up on the shore either. So unless, you know, that's going to be explored in, like, a future novel in that world, you know, one never knows. I think it was just to make her feel bad and make her... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so I guess it wasn't so much explored. Speaking of, like, Jude feeling bad after, like, accidentally killing someone, I would have liked it if um, she she had been more guilty after ki- after killing Valeri... Oh, God, Valer- I'm Valerian. just gonna call it Valerian. <laughs> Valerian. Thank you. I would have liked liked it if they explored some guilt at um 
at the end of it because um, you know she, you know she's human. I would have liked to have seen you know guilt and regret after um, you know like her first kill because it it's mm-hmm. such a big shock. But at the uh, but at the same time, it would have been nice to see her being conflicted with the with those feelings because she's like, but he bullied me and he was going to kill me. I can't feel guilty, mm-hmm. but I still feel guilty anyway. But maybe I think it was. Um, Maybe to like make her seem more like Maddox, and therefore, even though she's human, she's more Fey. But I don't I th- know. I think actually this is a weakness, or maybe not weakness, because it makes the book flow faster. Uh, there is a, a, f- a famous book, a writing book. I kind of disagree with it, but it says that you have to do action sequence. So basically, you have an action, and then later we have a sequence where the character goes and kind of thinks about what happened. Not, it's not, I'm, I'm s- simplifying it. Kind of, you kind of go over it. But I find that it's in books, even in movies, sometimes you have something happen, and then you have the character reflecting about what happened or reliving it or thinking about it and I find that it's uh, lacking a lot and we don't get it what I found was most jarring was in the second book when she makes out with Cardon by the way I mean I, I, I'm not a teenager anymore I know teenagers make out and stuff but I don't understand why are you gonna take off your ties if you're go- just gonna kiss <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm ve- I was very confused. Okay, anyways, I don't know why you would take off her... Cl- I, okay, whatever. But anyways, so basically she makes out with him, which is a big deal. And then the next scene, she's out doing some something, you know? And we never get a feeling of what she thought about it, what she felt about yeah, it. Yeah, I know? remember that. It was so weird, and you can say, oh, because maybe she's trying to suffocate the feel. You know, she's trying to deny her feeling, and she's trying to be cold. But but I would have liked to have seen a little bit of a reaction, even if it's a reaction. Ah, it was nothing, you know, kind of trying to fake to herself. Eh, it was nothing, or I don't know. But I find that uh, it's it's something that uh, sometimes it feels a little bit uh, lacking. However. It is a book that moves fast, and maybe it does move fast because we don't get this character reaction. So maybe it's something that ends up being good. I wish there was a little, little bit more of what happened, you know, like of thinking about it. Me too, me too. But I did, I did love the series as a whole. I do think yes. that the uh, third book is definitely the weakest one, whereas... Um, I think the uh, first book is, and the four, I like the first and I like the first and the second one equally. But I think the first one is the strongest. I really like her writing style as well. Um, I, I just, I wasn't too sure about um, the Fey world. It, I, it, it, it's like the first like Fey world novel I've read. Um, mm-hmm. I know they're quite popular at the minute. It did take yes. me a little while to like get into it. I mean. I think she describes one fade that has goat legs, and I was just like, "What am I reading?" <laughs> but um, but um, the plot and the characters just sucked me in so much more than the world. Mm, okay, yeah, uh, I had read Holy Black's own uh, "The Darkest Part of the Forest." That's a good book. I love that, and uh, it 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 does relate with this world a little. Uh, there are some characters that show up on this minor, you know, when you have all this phase assembly. And uh, it gave me a good feel about it. And I think I had read the other ones. So it was better for it in, in terms of the fae world. About the books, in terms of structure, something interesting that Holy Black does is the way she deals with the midpoint. The midpoint you have in movies and in books is usually in the middle where things turn around and kind of change. And it, it you can really see in those books because she says in each book it's book one and book two. And this division between book one and book two is right in the midpoint. And so book one is when Bella King after Bella King betrays everyone, right? So everything changes. Book two is right after Jude is taken to the sea. But then book three is the one that's weakest. It's right after uh, Cardon says, she's my wife, you know? But it's not really a twist. Well, book three is not so much of a twist, but it was something unexpected. But book... um, Three is a little bit of a... It's something that we're kind of new, right? So it wasn't something that 
was so interesting. But one thing that I like is that the, tw I, the first book at the end with o uh, Oak being crowned, did you expect it, Mary? No. Uh, Oak being crowned? You mean Carden being crowned? Carden being crowned. I'm yeah. getting Oak, Oak <laughs> crowned Carden. <laughs> yes. And but but you know in, what I what I loved about it, even finding out about Oak, is that it's a surprise. But at the same time, in retrospect, it makes total sense. Even Balakin's betrayal. When you look back, you see that the signs are all there. And this is the best. It's not such a huge twist, but it's a twist. It's the best kind of twist. There's like, oh, what happened? And there's like, oh my God, it makes total sense. You see, and, I, you see, I think. I I think the best twist was at the end of the second book where um, he announces to everyone that she is his wife and then he banishes her. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I didn't... Yeah, he had to. To be fair, he had he to. Had but I was to. just like, I did not expect that. And it, ju it just shows how much Jude actually underestimated him as a, a political thinker. Because mm -hmm. she thought that only she could t do it. Oh, no. C Carden's been one step ahead of her from the start. Yes, not Even from the start, but eventually... <laughs> Yeah, eventually he caught up. <laughs> yeah. The only thing, again, I love the third book, okay? Don't get me wrong. It has happy endings for everybody. But I oh, do like thankfully. the way he's, he talked about it. Oh, I did it because you would think it was cool. It's like, oh, what? I, I thought it was smart. And the way he worded it, it was very clear that she could forgive herself. But I guess, like I said, I can definitely understand why she wouldn't understand it this is interesting i didn't really follow the fandom but before the third book came out some people actually thought that no he had banished her and he had betrayed her <laughs> which is funny mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. a there's one thing i did want to talk about though and that was um to do with uh vivienne and heather yes. i did i did not like that relationship at all um when um you know like vivian i know she really loves heather but she i didn't like the end where um, i think if i remember correctly she did erase heather's memories but then she started up uh, like a new relationship with her i just mm -hmm. didn't i didn't like that it ru it really rubbed me the wrong way and the fact that you know she just kept she just uh, kept lying to heather about her true self and yet at the same time she expected heather to like you know, taking Oak without questions and then taking Jude and Tara, you know, Jude without any questions, I really did not like it. It, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And uh, that's my only big major complaint with the book. I wish that they hadn't got back together after um, Vivienne had, had uh, erased her memories. Like I said, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Oh, I think they should have gotten together because, you know, it's a book about with a happy ending and they loved each other and people make mistakes, right? So, um, it's, but I, I do agree with you that they end in a way that I guess it's like a second chance for V, but at the same time, um, she's going to be lying to her in a way, right? So, it's not based on truth, so it's a little problematic. Uh, it would be better maybe if V had found a way to understand and respect Heather a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, especially after when, um, you know, she I don't think she quite warned the dangers, uh, uh, Heather, of the dangers of the Fey world. And I think even Jude mentions that because mm -hmm. um, Viv Vivienne just doesn't understand what it's like for a human to like live in the uh, Fey world because, you know, she's not a human herself. She's only half human. So, um... I mean, I know it's from Jude's point of view and we don't have, you know, um, enough time to delve into things. But because we don't, we, because we don't see that, yeah, it, it, it did rub me the wrong way. Um, but I guess you're right. I mean, it is a happy ending. I think, you know, if they ever do make like, um, if Holly, Bla I hope Holly Black does write a no novella about, about the two of them because it would be interesting. It would really be interesting to like delve into the two as characters and their psyche. But, um, mm -hmm. or even like, you know, if they ever have a TV show, um, do that as well. Yeah, I think th this, th this series is so popular. I think, I wouldn't doubt that it becomes a TV series or maybe it could be movies as well, but nowadays it's more like TV series. So. I, I, th I hope it's, it's a TV show. <laughs> and, and you know what I'd do? If I was in charge of it, I would change the third book. I'm sorry, book purists, but I would. I would make Locke survive and be the major villain alongside Maddock. 
Come on, it would be so good. <laughs> yeah. The third book, there, there, there's another novel that's recent and popular that's called A Curse So Dark and Lonely. It, it's okay. I, I'm not sure it's so great because I, I don't... I don't I didn't remember the plot and I didn't remember the name, so I guess it's not so great. It didn't, I enjoyed reading it, but now I don't remember the plot. But it has something that this guy that turns into a monster, and I thought it was similar, but at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, if you think about the time when Holly was writing it, it's probably that it's such an unfortunate, an unfortunate coincidence that it happens to be similar. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the end of the third book was a little easy, I think, uh, also the, the way it should, wins. So I guess we're complaining about the third book, but I love the third book, okay? We're just, we're just you know, looking at, analyzing stuff. Yeah, I, I, I did enjoy the third book, but I, I, I enjoyed the, um, the first two more. But I, I was still, you know, very happy with the ending. I was happy that um, Madoc and Oriana... Ariana survived, and I was mm-hmm. so so happy that Jude got got her man, and they yeah. did have a happy ending. Like the, the all the family together at a pizza place, it it was great. Yeah, it is about family and having them all together. Yeah, it was lovely, and uh, I, yeah, it it has a good positive message, and there is something heartwarming about this series. That's really fun. I think. Yeah, and. Honest, um, if there's any like, you know, you know, Raylos who are still upset about Ray and Ben Solo, yep, I am too, and that's why I, uh, that's part of the reason why I read this book because I'm just fed up of like heroines not getting their um, redeem, you know, villain redeemed romances, and uh, this this book this book is a uh, this book will heal help heal the wound in your heart because it certainly helped me. Yeah, and also I think the it's good to see. Women who have who are complex, right? I'm not gonna say Jude is the most complex character I've, I've seen, but she has some complexity, right? She can be feminine, she can be aggressive, she has issues about you know having this father. You know, there there's a whole world of things happening. She's a round character, whereas you know, in, in movies, uh, it's 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 we don't get a, that much with female characters and. and Unfortunately, no. So it was nice to like see. It was really nice to see that Jude was so refreshing. She was one. Of, I think she's good. She, she. I am reading more books at the minute. You know, I've read um, Serpent and Dove, which is very good. I, I've finished reading A Court of Th- uh, Thorns and Roses. Again, very good. And I think Jude is going to go down as one of my favorite um, female protagonists of all time because she's she she was awesome. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> Mm, well, I've I've read quite a few lately. I think she's pretty good. I just what I don't like is the way we don't get to understand. Like we don't get her reaction, right? I yeah. Like it, but I wish I could. We could get a little bit more of her thought process. I think. Yeah, I do think you know overall because I've just finished reading *A Court of Thorns and Roses*. I think the uh, I, I'm not going to try and pronounce the heroine's name. I'm so sorry, but she. I think Fairy? she's very like so, something like that. Oh, I like her. I think she's. I think she's. Uh, She's slightly better written than Jude because she does react to stuff. Yes. Maybe, maybe we could do um, uh, 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 a discussion on that if uh, people want us to. Let us know in the yeah. comments if you do. But you have to read the rest of the series. Oh, I will. Read it. Yeah. I will. <laughs> so you see what happens. Ta-da. I will see what happens. No spoilers, please. No spoilers. Yeah, don't spoil Mary. <laughs> <laughs> One last question: If if a TV show or a movie is made, who would you cast as Jude and Carden? Outcast young unknown characters, and make sure for Jude to have somebody who's Hispanic. And yeah, is she Hispanic? Oh, I, I didn't know that. So That's because interesting. Because of her last, because of her last name. Ah. And I think I, I think the idea is I think most artists depict her like that. So, ah, that's cool. But she doesn't need to be Hispanic. She could Duarte could be Portuguese as well, but that's still like um, and and here Medi- I, Mediter- Mediterranean uh, European. Yeah, and here I've been imagining Daisy Ridley as her. I would, yeah, I would have cast her, but if she's Hispanic, maybe not. But I would um cast uh, oh god, what's his name? Timoth- Timothy Timothy. 
Shalamont as a Cardin. I think he'd be really cool. I don't know who that is. <laughs> he's um, he's a he's that young one in in Instella. I don't know. <laughs> I need to watch more stuff while we're doing Star Wars. Like seriously, but, <laughs> but seriously, I I still think that you know since they're young, I I don't like it when they take these uh, young adult novels and they cast this twenty something year old. So <laughs> it, it just annoys me. So I would go for some unknown, unknown people ones. or people who come from maybe TV series and stuff but that are teenagers you know like late things like for Cardon you know 19 20 21 at most um, I don't know well to, to uh, Timothy is 24 so that uh, kind of I think it's in the I think it's in the bracket for me personally anyway that's who I like to imagine is when I'm when I see Cardon let it let us know in the comments, guys. Who would you cast as uh, Jude and Carden and the rest of the characters? Yeah, and maybe we could get some real twins to do uh, Jude and Taryn. But I do love it when some actresses do two twins and they do it so great. This is so common. There's some like there's a Brazilian telenovela with this evil twin and good twin, and the actress who did it, she was so good that when she was one twin pretending to be the other, you knew that it was <laughs> the other twin. <laughs> like, she, w she would dress like the good twin and be the good twin and uh, talk like the good twin, but you knew it was the evil twin. <laughs> oh, nice. Maybe <laughs> That's we made really cool. <laughs> There, there are quite a few. I, there, there are these things with the evil twins, the good twin and the evil twin, and the, but usually the, then they have like the usually the evil twin wants the guy who loves the good twin, <laughs> <laughs> which didn't really happen here. It was kind of, it, there was a little love triangle, but it was a little different. But yeah, but but maybe if you find some twins, it could be fun. But if you find somebody to do twins, it, it's really. A, demanding it can be quite exciting so yeah so we think this is gonna be a tv show we're looking for <laughs> we're looking we're looking looking I, i'm pretty sure it will because people you know with netflix and stuff they they like to explore good ideas yeah please netflix please make a tv show of this anything else denise i think that's it for now yep okay guys so Thank you very much for listening or watching. Leave your comments, say what you think. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also listen to us on SoundCloud and iTunes and watch us on YouTube. Thank you very much for listening and may the force serve you out.